Yeah, and that's another thing. Uh, a lot of these big pharmaceutical corporations, especially when you talk about companies like Pfizer or whatever, they have people working for them that are ex FDA or former or people that are like wearing two hats. They work for the FDA and they work for the pharmaceutical company. Yeah, I mean, isn't that a huge problem? Well, it's a conflict of interest. I was on a show the other night and the guy was trying to rebut me a little bit. And he said, uh, well, wasn't it just a big conflict of interest? And I said, yeah, it, it was a conflict of interest. Bluebird Bio wanted to make more, wanted to make money more than they wanted to cure people. And that was the conflict. Um, but in the end, if we go back and look in our recent history, <clears throat> Vioxx, right. Merck, right. they knew that people on Vioxx had a multiple time more chance, I believe it was six, to get heart attacks than the people who didn't take Vioxx. Mm -hmm. And they let it go. <clears throat> they ended up being fined $950 million because they were caught red-handed. Mm. Then we go to Paxil. 2012, they were fined $3 billion. That was GSK. And GSK knew that Paxil was creating suicidal thoughts in adolescents, and they hit it. We had at least 100,000 kids commit suicide that came off of Paxil. And then we got the best one of them all, OxyContin, hmm. the Sackler family, right. Purdue. And, you know, what is our government doing? They're letting them go. Yeah, why is, isn't there something recent in the news with them? Didn't they just have to? Didn't they just four billion dollars? They're going to end up doing a deal, you know, because they basically told the government, if you go after us personally, right? You know, we're going to bank up Purdue. You're never going to get us anyway, but we'll give you four billion. So you know, they're worth fourteen billion. So they give four billion up, and they have the art institutes with their names on it and all of them. Right? They don't spend one day in jail. I mean, what's the pain of one parent, of one brother, sister? who lost the kid to OxyContin. They were making drug addicts out of these kids purposely. You know, we talk about the United States, which is a bit peculiar when we talk about the world because we have all these mass shootings. Well, 70% of them are created by people under 21. Well, why are they doing that? Because they're on Paxil, because they were on Ritalin, right. because we're drugging our kids, and right. then when they're coming out of drugs, you know, they're, they don't know. I mean, they're just screwed up in the head. Mm. And our drug companies are doing that to make all this money. And then what do they do? They get machine guns. They buy guns, whatever it is. I mean, I'm not a big NRI guy, but it is true that guns don't kill people, do. I mean, I, I lived in Switzerland for a while. Every family must own a rifle because World War I, it, they made the law. and they It's have a to law. Have you have to own they a rifle. They have to own a rifle. Really? Sure. Still? Still. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, and every person has to go to the military because it's a tiny country surrounded by Russia and Germany and Italy and France and all of that. They're not killing anybody. You know, what's going on? We're turning all of our kids, and by the way, our adults. I mean, I think, you know, the average 60-year-old's on seven different drugs. I mean, we're turning everybody into drug addicts. And yeah. uh, what are the pharma companies doing in the last 10 years? They siphoned $20 billion to our politicians who let them get away with it. Mm. And in the end, I say, you know, we've got to make all of our congressmen and our senators, when they're on television and when they're in Congress and at the Senate, they've got to wear NASCAR outfits so we can see, see who's sponsors. writing the checks. You know, I want to see, oh, why did they vote that way? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, look at Pfizer gave them 100000 last year. You know, and I mean, the United States is a great place filled a wonderful wonderful people is that george carlin who said that it might have been <laughs> whoever said it but uh, it was a great thing that was great yeah. yeah but i mean you know come on with all of this i mean you know we're a great country how do we let you know these corruptorations and by the way now they're hand in hand with black lives matter me too and lgbtq mm -hmm. they're all just one happy family raping and pillaging the country i mean it's nuts yeah yeah a huge problem too not just like the uh the opiates are a huge problem obviously but another thing is the the ritalin and the adderall are fucking insane yeah. i don't know I could count on one hand the people I know that aren't on that. Yeah, they're, they're finding it in the in the in the uh, water supply. It's everywhere. I, I mean, it, I mean, it's nuts. And these people aren't going to jail; they're going to the country club. That stuff is so fucking bad for you. It's unbelievable how bad that shit is for you. That is not how you're supposed to. That it drains the fucking dopamine out of your brain to where if you don't have it. You're just a fucking blob of nothing, and then all you can think about is getting more. It's so fucking addictive and so bad. I think it's. I think there's not much difference from Adderall than actual meth, like pure meth. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, you know, look at 
We, you know, there's a great book I read one time. It was called Sykes, and he said that the the downfall of the United States of America came in 1959 when they opened Disney World. He said because we came from a country that we knew we had to work hard, we had to get married, have children. Um, suffer, sacrifice, and die to a country who doesn't want to have children, doesn't want to sacrifice, will spend the last money not to die, and life's all about having a good time. And I say, for example, that the worst song ever made, now I'm a singer-songwriter, I've done a lot of good songs and bad songs, I'm not sure you'd like them all, but I always say the worst song ever made was done by Whitney Houston when she sang that the greatest love of all is happening to me Learn to love yourself. It's the greatest love of all. There's never been such a horrible song written. That's not what mm. it's about. It's about loving other people, mm. not loving yourself. You know. And then they started saying, well, if you don't love yourself, you can't love others. And all of these corporations are trying to sell you an iPhone and trying to sell you makeup and trying to sell you gym shoes. Love yourself. And, You're okay. You can, yeah. get, you can get fat. Yeah, you that, can be that's lazy. right. Yeah. We're going to make mannequins that look fat now. Yeah. And, and don't worry about it. You know? You put on 30 pounds, get a tattoo. You put on 60, get two tattoos. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. It's nuts. You were dealt this hand. You're a man or you're a woman. You're a boy or you're a girl. You're bald or you're, you're, you've got freckles or you're dark skinned or you're light skinned or you were born with defective fingers or whatever. You're not a goddamn victim. You're a human being. Mm. And you end up having to play the best hand you can with the cards you were dealt. Stop all this nonsense. Oh, now I'm a woman. Or now I'm a man. No, you're not. You mutilated yourself and you're nuts. Right.